Hey guys, welcome back to the Woolen Homestead. My name is Tiffany and I'm coming to you from Michigan. This is a podcast all about knitting, crocheting, um, sometimes spinning. Yeah, um, this is podcast episode 95 and this is April 14th, no, April 15th, 2021. It is 37 degrees Fahrenheit out and raining, which is so crazy because I feel like last time I wrote, it was a bit warmer. Um, and yeah, it was just a lot nicer out. So <laughs> I don't know. It's just kind of crazy. But it's kind of a cozy day too. So I'm, I'm digging it. It's all okay. <laughs> um, you can find me on Instagram as The Woolen Homestead. Um, that is our Instagram. My husband does post on there from time to time. We have it. Um, we have it together, so from when we did yarn dyeing, so every once in a while he'll post on there too. But usually it is me on there. Um, and then uh, we have an email for the podcast, which is thewoolenhomestead at gmail.com. There's a P.O. box, so if anyone wants to send prizes for giveaways, anything like that, it, um, the P.O. box info is in the drop down along with the email and everything else that you can find. I'm also planning to do show notes now. I've not been doing them. Um, I just think it'd be a little bit more helpful. Anyone that does podcasting knows <laughs> they're just kind of a pain in the butt, but I know it's very helpful and I know I appreciate them. So I'm going to try and do that. I'm probably just not going to put up um, like titles on the screen as much anymore just to save some time. So um, yeah, we've got one finished object this week. Um, Works in progress. I got three of those, a couple acquisitions, and some life stuff to talk about. So, my FO, my opal socks. So, these are so much fun. Um, I did 64 stitches, heel flap and gusset, two by two ribbing, size US one needles, just a regular rounded toe. Very happy with these. I started these back in September. And they were just my purse knitting. And um, yeah, so just got some work on them here and there. Um, the sock blockers are from Patricia from Nitography. And you can see the matching um, mitten blockers up there. I love these so much. They're so pretty. So yeah, very, very happy with these. I'll do close ups so you can see the colors. So fun. When I did a um, modified eye partridge heel, it's the one that's in Hermione's Everyday Socks. That's the one that I used for that. Super happy with those. Um, still kind of on a sock kick. I'm flying. I just want to knit everything all the time. So that's kind of a thing right now. But... <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm really wanting to knit a lot of socks. So I'm just really liking the ease of it being a small portable project. I'm loving that. So I'm going to take a quick sip of tea. I can feel my allergies are kind of settling in. Um, I've got this mug that says keep calm and keep knitting. I've had this for a while. My brother-in-law got me this for Christmas a couple years ago. And the tea that I'm drinking is from Spot Organic Tea. This was from, um, that sweet care package that my coworkers got me. There was a bunch of tea in there and I believe they got it at Marshall's they said. And, um, it's a, oh, it doesn't say which one it is. I think this was like a green matcha tea, which I've never had before. So we'll see if it's too hot. Mmm. Perfect temp. Awesome. Ooh, that's really good. I'll also talk about, um, what I'm wearing. This is the Cipolla sweater by Caitlin Hunter, who's Boyland Networks. You can see the arm. I love the arm detail. And yeah, it's just really nice and boxy. Um, it's got a lot of positive ease, which I love. Beautiful color work. Um, I had dyed the yarn for this. This was our orchid colorway and I'm going to say it was Dove. Dove or Dove Heather? I think it was Dove. And um, yeah, so I I, oh, I love this. The only thing I'm running into lately is it tends to like 
come out too far on the neck. It kind of stretches out a little bit, but I think if maybe I just give it a wash and re-black it might kind of tighten things up a little bit. Um, and I also wanted to share this necklace. So I was given this from Amy of Noble Character Crafts when we did an advent swap. And it's so cute. So it's just this little sweet little necklace with all these stitch markers on it. So there's a bunch of the ones for um, like stitch markers for the needles and there's progress keepers and they're dog groomer themed isn't that so cute so there's a little dog there's a comb I believe there's scissors on one of these yeah they're there so cute so yeah I just love this necklace so I try to wear it obviously I can't wear it to work but I like wearing it you know just when I'm at home and going to events and things like that. Not that we've had too many of those to go to lately. But, um, yeah, I'm just really, really loving it. Um, oh, I didn't talk about the color. So the opal color is 7937. It's from the smile line that they did and the colorway is Frolish Kite can read that I it's in the yellow there so yeah I want to knit all the opal socks one of the next pairs of socks that I want to knit um is a pair of hand spun that I have it was like a um scrappy sock bundle of fiber and I cannot wait to knit those I really I can't remember if I mentioned this before, but I wanted to wait till my birthday to cast them on, which is at the end of May. But I kind of just, maybe I'll make them birthday month socks. I'll do them in May, starting in May. <laughs> then I don't have to wait as long. But yeah, I don't know. I'm just really wanting to, to cast those on. Um, yeah. Oh, when I did those on Knit Pro Zing's uh, DPNs. Um, we'll go on to works in progress. So... My first one that I have to show is another mitten from my uh, Mitten Garland Advent Calendar. So I'm on number five. So you can see it's number five. And um, yeah, I, I just, I still love working on these. I try to work on them in the morning. And I will show my others again. So the first four, and they're so cute. Just little color work mittens for a Advent Garland. Um, I'm knitting them on size US ones, and the yarn is Knit Picks Palette. So it's a fingering weight yarn, non superwash. Really nice to work with for color work. Um, the pattern is by Kathy Lewinsky. And you can find it for free on her website, which is justcraftyenough.com, and then. Um, let's see. Yeah, size US1, higher, higher sharps, um, using Magic Loop. Oh, and I wanted to share, I'm using, this is from Knitter's Pride, I believe. Yeah, Knitter's Pride. It is a, like a chart holder. This is what I use for it. So I just keep it down on my table for every morning and... Like I said, this is a free pattern, so I can show the chart here. And I just, you can um, put little magnets on here. So I just have magnets on the pattern, and then I have my little bar of how far I am. So, yeah, it's really nice. I love this thing. I got it um, for my birthday last year. And it's on the other side, it's got a little pocket and a pen. There's different sizes you can get, too, if you want a smaller size, but... I really like this a lot. Um, I think it'd be a little bit harder if I was traveling with it, but I mean, you just wouldn't be able to put it in a bag probably unless you have a much bigger bag. But um, like I said, there are smaller sizes or you could just, you know, either throw it in a bigger bag or just throw it in the car if you were going somewhere with it, like to a knit night or anything. Um, yeah, so that is that. Um... Next up is my sweater. So this is the Fjord Folk 
Genser by Lincoln Newman. And I have just started the second sleeve. And it was kind of hard for me to get going on this second sleeve. Really, because there's kind of a lot going on to get it going. And I'll explain that in a second. But I'll show what I got done. And... Yeah, I just got a little bit done on the cuff here. So why it's kind of a lot going on is because the pattern is out of this book. And let's see, there we go. The pattern's out of this book and the book is all in Norwegian. Um, so what I did was I just used Google Translate and because it's it's a pretty um, there's not a ton of words to it. It's just like one page of of the words and how to do everything and then there's a bunch of charts. So I used Google Translate and I just kind of wrote everything out one day um, in a notebook, translated version, and then I just used this book to reference the charts. So what I'm kind of having to do a bit of increasing and switching needles and making sure my stitch counts right and then also having to access a chart. Um, there's just a lot of back and forth so it was just kind of a little bit time consuming to get it going. Once I get going on the sleeve it's not bad at all but just that beginning part I was like oh it just was harder for me to sit down and work on it. But I'm going to show the picture again because I know last time I flashed it really fast. I noticed that in the editing. So I'm going to show you guys what the sweater looks like. I love it so much. It's really, really cute. So I cannot wait to get further on this, especially to that yoke, because I've got the body done, I've got the other sleeve done, and now I just need to do um, the other sleeve and then the yoke and the, um, like the turtleneck. So, yeah, super excited. Can't wait. So, love it. I just want to power through that other sleeve, watch some good movies with it, you know, where I don't really have to super pay attention to it. Um, Oh, I'm going to talk about the yarns, because I talked about this before, but if you're new, I will explain my yarn situation in this. This is actually a DK pattern, <laughs> but I have like five different sizes in this, but I loved the color scheme so much, I was just like, I'm going to make it work. I'm going to figure it out. So here is the other sleeve, so you can see, and the body looks just like this as well. <laughs> So, yeah, very autumnal. So I've got, like I said, it's a DK pattern. The brown is Fisherman's Wool Lion Brand. That's a worsted. The tan is Lion Brand Sport Weight, which is a yarn that's discontinued. I've got the body and sleeve colors, like the main color, that orange is a colorway that I dyed um, back when we had our yarn, which was um, Pumpkin Spice. This is actually DK right here. <laughs> and then I have, <laughs> I have a fingering weight version of it, which I am holding double. <laughs> so, and that I'm alternating skeins with. So that's kind of how I'm making this work. And then I also have on reserve, if need be, I have this colorway and a worsted weight. <laughs> so, which I was thinking more for, like for the collar, because at least that would be kind of cohesive. Um, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> so, and I am using um, the recommended needles uh, sizing for it. So, let's see, what is the size? US 4, 3.5 millimeter. So yeah, that is what's going on with that sweater. I am going to be so happy when this is done. I will say I'm not in like a big sweater knitting mode. 
but I want the finished object of this one really bad. So that's kind of, I think, where I'm at with that. I think I'm really feeling the socks. Still want to work on my West Knits shawl, but I have put that on the back burner because I want to get this sweater done. So that one I'm really, really wanting to work on. But I think I'll be super happy once I get some of these bigger projects off my needles. I have a lot of bigger works in progress going on. So I just want to get some get some headway on them. Um, and then this is in, oh, I love this bag. This is a Bags by Awesome Granny bag. And um, it's got the sweet little fireflies on it. And then this is a little yard keychain. I kind of got it squished on there right now. Um, this was from Amy, who I was talking about earlier from Noble Character Crafts. This was in one of my advent goodies from her. So yeah, love that sweater. Um, I'm so curious to see how it works out. <laughs> I hope it does. I have tried on the body portion and it did fit. So that was good. And so does the arm. I tried on the sleeve as well. So that's exciting. Um, my next work in progress is in this super cute bag. This is from Freckled Whimsy. It's got a little handle here and it's all Disney dogs. I really like the zipper, the colored zipper. It's so cute. I love that they have stitch on there. <laughs> yeah, I just love this fabric. I thought it was so cute. So this is a new cast on. You guys have not seen this yet. It is a little shorty sock. So I just got the urge to knit some short socks because I haven't done that in a couple of years. So let's see if I can get this untangled. I'm not using a specific pattern. This has got the little rolled cuff. Um, I just kind of looked up online um, basically different ways to do shorty socks. And I liked the look of the rolled cuff, so I just kind of followed what they said. I think I did maybe six rounds of knitting and then started uh, heel flap and gusset heel. And the heel um, flap and gusset, I used the pattern from Crazy Sock Ladies. Um, sock patterns and then I have finished the gusset decreases and I'm just on the foot so this is flying I'm loving it I love the colors just so cute kind of springy I'm doing um, nine inch circulars size us1 chow goose 64 stitch and yeah I just think these are going to be super cute for spring and summer um, this is what the yarn looks like I bought this at our new local yarn shop that's in town it's called um stranded yarn and coffee they don't have the coffee there yet but post pandemic they're planning to have the coffee there so um and the yarn is sirdar soul to soul and i have a really funny story about this well it's it's funny to me i don't know how funny it is to everybody else but i found it really funny um so <laughs> I was visiting my mom and my sister last week and <laughs> while, okay, I'll back it up real quick. So while I was knitting on this sock, I kept um, thinking the yarn was called Heart and Soul. And so I kept singing that Huey Lewis in the news song, Heart and Soul. I sang it all the time <laughs> while I was knitting on it. And so then I was <laughs> visiting um, my sister and my mom last week. Hi, Ella. Um, and my sister had on a Huey Lewis of the News t-shirt that said Soulsville on it. And I had this sock with me. I was like, oh my gosh, Melody. I was like, I'm knitting this yarn that's called Heart and Soul. And like, I was like, I always sing it when I'm knitting on it. And she's like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. And so I get it out to show her, <laughs> to show her what it was. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's actually Soul to Soul, not Heart and Soul. And so I just, I thought it was so funny that I kept singing this song thinking that's what it was. <laughs> thinking that's what it was. So, like I said, probably just funny to me and her because we like laughed so hard about it because we had the same humor and the same laugh. But um, we thought it was pretty funny. So, those are my, now my heart and soul socks. <laughs> that's what they're being called. So, 
Um, so yeah, that's it for my works in progress. I'll go on to acquisitions. So only thing I bought was a new set of Chow Gu size US ones. These are 32 inch. I'm going to give Magic Loop socks a try. Like just a single sock, Magic Loop. I've done it before with a 40 inch um, needle uh, for the cable. And I just wanted to try it with the 32 because I know that's kind of generally what's done. Um, and I want to see how I like it because usually I was never really a big Magic Loop fan. But when doing those mittens on Magic Loop, I've been enjoying it a lot more. So I thought I'd give that a shot. Um, the other thing that I got, see if I can grab them all. <laughs> so, let's see. Okay. <laughs> While visiting my mom, she asked me if I wanted any double pointed needles because she said she doesn't really use them. She's just not really drawn to them. Um, she uses them every once in a blue moon. And I was like, sure. And so what I'm going to do is see what needles I have in my stash and what I don't have. And then with the leftovers that I already have, I'm just going to give back to her. So <laughs> she gave me this big old pile <laughs> dropping them everywhere. And then she also had these ones. And these are Brittany size US 13, which I make a bunch of these uh, super bulky hats and they use a size 13. So I'm kind of excited to give that a shot. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to see what I've got in my inventory of knitting needles that I can kind of round it out and fill in any gaps. So life stuff. Um, I totally forgot to mention this last time, but about two days after I podcast last, I went and got my COVID shot. Um, I got the Moderna shot and had no side effects at all. Really. I was tired. That was it. Um, the day after was Easter. So I was able to kind of just chill out and take it easy. I took a nap, which is not like me. I don't nap at all. <laughs> I would love to, but I just, I don't know. I'm always like, oh, there's so much I could be doing right now, you know? So I did take a nap. So that was definitely showed me that I was at least tired for sure. But um, that was the only thing for me. I was just a little bit tired. Um, and I get my next one beginning of May, I think is when it is. So yeah, um, I also got to meet my niece's puppy. So when I went to my mom's last week, um, my sister lives about 20 minutes away. So she um, brought her um, two of her girls and their friend and then um, my niece's puppy. So I got to meet her. She's a little pug named Poppy. She's so cute. She's about 12 weeks old, I think. Yeah, I think she's about 12 weeks old. I got to give her a bath and oh, she was such a sweetie and I trimmed her nails and then I just wrapped her up in a towel and I got to cuddle her and she passed out and it was so cute. I have major puppy fever all the time. I, oh, I love puppies so much. So that was super fun to see her. Um, yeah, like I said, it was kind of a laid back Easter. Um, <laughs> I, Ethan slept because he had to work that night and then I just took it easy too because I just had my shot. I was tired. Um, and then we just went to his folks for dinner and then he went to work. So it was, it was a nice chill day. It was good. Um, oh yeah. And then we had a, a very big event last week that was very exciting. We found a baby squirrel. <laughs> so... Um, if you saw on Instagram, we, let's see, when was this? It was, I think, Wednesday of last week. And um, Ella had, Ella's been doing this thing lately where she wakes up at like one in the morning. <laughs> it's really frustrating. <laughs> and she wants to go outside. So I'm trying to be better about making sure I take them out as late as possible um, before bed. And then it's usually a little bit better, but I think now it's kind of become a little bit of a habit. I also found out she's been drinking right before she goes to bed. So I let her get a couple laps and then we, we go to bed. I kind of stopped that a little bit. 
Um, but so she had woken me up and we went out to, she went out to go potty, 2 a.m., nothing. Didn't find, you know, anything, no animals. <laughs> Just did her job and then we came back inside and then I was like awake. And ugh, I was like, it's my day off. I don't want to be up at two in the morning. <laughs> so I think I ended up finally dozing off a little bit. And then um, I was like, couldn't really go back to bed. So I think finally at like four, I was like, okay, I guess I'm up now. We're just going to have a really early morning. And I wasn't going to feed them yet because I didn't want to totally throw off their routine because they usually eat at like six and but I was like well they probably have to go potty again so his Benny I don't think I can't remember if Benny went it doesn't matter but so I took them outside again and just hanging out outside all of a sudden Ella starts barking now Ella is lab and blue tick coonhound so she has a very high prey drive she loves chasing squirrels it's her favorite thing to do. She's not much of a bird dog, but loves rodents. <laughs> so she, she starts barking and it was, and if any pet owners, I'm sure you understand, like there's like different barks mean different things. So like she started doing this really like intense barking, like repeated barking. And I was like, oh no, that's, that's the, I found an animal bark or something, you know, like that. So, cause she's found a possum before she's found all sorts of things. So, um, I immediately went over and started to see what she had. Um, I was hoping it was maybe just like a toad, something like something, you know, that she, well, she's gotten a toad before too, I guess. So I was thinking something that she couldn't hurt, but she, I was just hoping it was something that she was just messing with. Um, you know, in the, in the leaves. Um, and then I saw there was a baby animal. It was a squirrel, baby squirrel. I didn't know at first what it was. And I started to panic because I thought she got it and I thought she heard it. And I immediately like got her and I made her, you know, drop it, get rid of it, you know, whatever. Um, and I think with that one, she was just kind of nosing. I don't think she had it in her mouth. Um, so I get her off of him. And I take her inside and I wake Ethan up and I'm like kind of panicking because I was worried it was hurt. And I was like, um, there's a baby animal outside. Ella got it. I don't know what the condition is. Can you please come check it out? And so he goes and checks it out and it was still alive. We weren't sure if it was injured, um, but it was definitely still alive, which was good. But it had, its little eyes weren't open yet. It was still so little that its eyes were closed. And, um, um but it was, it was moving around and stuff. And so, like I said, this is four in the morning. So we didn't know like what our plan was to do with it. Um, at first we just, um, took it, put it in a box just so we could maybe get it warm. Um, and we put a heating pad with a towel on it. And, um, I sat out with them on our three season porch. <laughs> so cute. And, um, and then Ethan did a little bit of research on, you know, what we could do. That's when you put the heating pad in there and just to kind of warm him up because um, we weren't sure how long he was out there. Um, and so he was pretty, pretty cold. Um, I, w I had remembered that on our community Facebook group for our town, there is a wildlife rehabilitator that's posts on there and people always... Um, are posting there hey I found this bird hey I found whatever and they pay, they're always tagging this lady so I was like I'm gonna give it a shot I'm gonna reach out to her you know see what I can find so I messaged her gave her my phone number and around 7 a.m. she gave me a call and um, I told her what had happened um, wasn't sure you know what the condition was for him um, and she said she would absolutely take him. It turns out she was really on the same side of town as me and everything. So it was really easy to, to get him over there. But as I was getting him ready, oh, she told me to go check to see if there was more. Because usually there's more outside. So I went and checked. I couldn't find any. And then there's this squirrel, like an adult squirrel, sitting on the fence, like watching me. And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> like I totally anthropomorphized these animals. And I was like, it knows I took its baby. It's sad. Like I... <laughs> I was like, it's, 
<laughs> I was just being so silly about it. And I was like, um, yeah, I just like convinced that this squirrel knew that I had its baby. And so then I was like, well, may I mean, maybe it is looking for it. And so I, I asked her, I said, you know, should I, um, should I put him back out there and see if the squirrel takes it? And she said, give it a shot. So we also sat out, um, our phone and had it playing baby squirrel noises. And we were literally watching it through the window to see if the squirrel was going to take it. Cause you don't want to be nearby. She was saying, um, because, um, or no, Ethan, Ethan actually knew that. He said, you don't want to be nearby because, um, that can, the mothers can sense that someone else is around. So, <clears throat> Watched the squirrel and it did not come back for the baby at all. It went right past it, nothing. Like it didn't even go on the ground. It just went up and did its own thing. So we're like, gave it a little bit. Okay, it's not doing anything. Um, I said, I'm just gonna, you know, go take him over there to the to the rehabilitator. So, um, yeah, I ended up taking her over there or taking him over there. And um, the lady was commenting on how fat and cute he was. So it sounds... Okay, so I chatted so much I ran out of space on my SD card, which has not happened in a very long time. So apparently talking about baby squirrels makes me talk a lot. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so I believe I was talking about um, dropping him off at the rehabilitator's house. And, um, yeah, she just... Um, she had said since he wasn't, um, since the mom had not come back, that something, something wasn't quite right. So, um, that's why she definitely thought I should bring him over to her. And, um, yeah, she had me scan for more, could not find any. Um, I couldn't even see any squirrel nests up in any of the trees at all. I know sometimes they'll also make nests like, um, where like a woodpecker has made a big hole in a tree. Couldn't really see anything from that either. Um, the only thing I kind of came to the conclusion was our neighbor had one of their trees removed like a week before that. And I'm wondering if maybe there was a nest up there. And so maybe the mama was relocating the babies. Um, and I'm wondering if maybe Ella scared off the mama that morning. That's, that's what I'm wondering, but, um, but I don't know. So, um, yeah, because that morning when we came out, something, she was chasing after something right first thing. So I couldn't see, it was dark. Um, and then later she found the baby. So that's the only thing I can come up with. Um, but yeah, so I got to <laughs> spend some good quality time with that little guy for a couple of hours that morning. And um, Ethan did as well. He, um, he was going to try and go back to bed and then it was just... He just couldn't, he was, because it was like five in the morning again too. So he uh, stayed up with me and, um, and we just kind of took care of that little guy. He was so cute. He was so cute. And it was so neat to see him, um, after he started to warm up, he, um, moved around a, a bit more, not a ton, like not out of the box or anything, but he would flop himself on his belly from his side to his belly and then turn himself around, um, he was so cute. And, um, yeah, we just, we fell in love with that little guy. <laughs> so cute. Um, but yeah, we just didn't want to leave him out there to have the chance of, a another animal getting him like a cat or something. We have a couple of stray cats in the area. So, um, yeah. So I'm so thankful to have, the, um, that lady as, um, someone to help help me through all of that because I you know I didn't know what what to do and you know what the the right choice was so um that was such a fun experience so so cute he was so cute um then <laughs> and this I haven't posted about on Instagram yet um Tuesday of this week <laughs> I had the day off and um I let the dogs out in the morning. Ethan was on his way to work. I was talking with Ethan. It was about 6 a.m. And I let the dogs out but didn't go out with them. 
Um, in the winter, I didn't go out with them a ton. I would just kind of watch. We have like in the laundry room, I can see them through the window. Um, and that morning it was, I don't even remember if it was chilly or if I just, for some reason, just didn't go out there with them. But the last time I had, and that's how I was able to get the little guy um, from Ella. This time they went out by themselves and I'm talking on the phone with Ethan. All of a sudden I hear that same bark from Ella. Oh no. And so I get out there, she found another baby squirrel. And this time she definitely had her mouth on him. And I just like yelled at her. I was like, get him, you know? And I'm sure my neighbors were like, what is going on? And I got her away. And it's hard. I obviously I can't be mad at my dog because she's just doing what dogs do. It's nature. It is what it is. But obviously if I can help her not hurt any baby animals. I'm definitely going to try and do that for sure. Um, and so yeah, she definitely had her mouth on this one. Um, and the poor thing was crying. Oh, <laughs> so sad. Um, and, um, I got her off of him. I took him took her inside. Benny's just hanging out. He's whatever. He's all lab and he's just my little companion just hanging out helping me out and I go back out and um I can't find it I cannot find the baby and so I'm like okay looking everywhere looking 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 cannot find it. I'm like okay well maybe the mom took it maybe the mom took it in that little bit of time um that I went in to you know get some gloves and to check them out in a flashlight and everything well then um I was talking with Ethan. He said maybe he's got like one of those thermal binocular things. Monocular? I don't remember what it is, but it's it's really cool. Um, and so I tried to use that. That was his idea. He said, go ahead and take that out. See if you can find him that way. And I couldn't find him. So that's when we were like, okay, hopefully, hopefully mama got him. Um, and so I gave it an hour and my dog still hadn't gone to the bathroom because <laughs> she kind of found that right away. So I was like, well, I'm, I'm going to let him out. And I said, and I was kind of thinking in the back of my head, well, maybe if he is still out there, Ella will find him, but I'm going to be right there so I can help. So I let them out. Sure enough, within an hour after we saw the other one, Ella found him. Ella found that one again. So I was right there. I got her away from him easily, but I saw where he burrowed. He had burrowed into the leaves and I hadn't seen him the first time. So, um, I was able to keep an eye on him, took her inside. <laughs> I left my gloves like where he was at so I could come back out and grab him. And, um, this one had his eyes open and, um, yeah, I took her inside. I, um, called <laughs> the wildlife lady again. <laughs> I was like, Hey, <laughs> Remember me? Um, I said I found another one. And um, so she had asked me, you know, about what had happened. And she said since it had been, you know, not picked up in that amount of time, um, to definitely bring him over again too. So, because usually by now the moms would have come and got him. So um, I got a box, <laughs> picked up the little guy. And, um, like I said, this one had his eyes open, you know, there was no blood or anything. Thankfully, I think Ella just plays with them. You know, I don't want, want to know what she would do. I'm sure instincts would kick in eventually, but, um, yeah, she, I think she just kind of plays with them like a toy. Um, so thankfully he wasn't hurt, at least not to the naked eye. He wasn't hurt. So, um, but he... Yeah, it didn't seem like any of his limbs were hurt or anything like that. So I think he just got a little spooked. Um, so I took him over <laughs> to her house as well. And she, yeah, she was just commenting on how fat these little guys were. So it sounds like um, she was saying that mama must have had some good milk. So um, she ended up taking um, the first guy to... Um, another lady that helps her out and so she's taking this guy with him as well so we can have his brother <laughs> so cute now this one I didn't name <laughs> I learned my lesson <laughs> I totally named the first one Ralph and then I got super attached to him 
<laughs> so I did not name this one, but, uh, oh, he was so cute. They're both so cute. So, so it all worked out in the end, but man, that after Ella found that second one and I wasn't out there and we were waiting that like hour or so, maybe a little longer, I was so upset because I was like, it's my fault. I let her out. I should I should have gone out with her. Why didn't I go out with her, you know? And so I was so excited that she found him again <laughs> that we could um, get him, get him safe. So yeah, so that's our random wildlife rescue stint that we've had over the last couple of weeks. <laughs> so yeah. This morning when I took Ella out, I took her out on a leash. <laughs> then you're gonna go to the bathroom on a leash because you are not finding any more little babies. So, um, but yeah, it's it was super fun, super super fun to have those babies and help them out. So yeah, yay. Um, so yeah, that's been the big stuff that's been going on here. Sorry that was super rambly. Um, but yeah, if any of you are interested about that story, that's what. That's what went on. Um, the last thing that I was going to talk about <clears throat> in life stuff is, um, I know I have talked about color street nails quite a bit. Once again, I don't have mine done. <laughs> it's so funny. Like my timing with this, I've done them twice since I podcast last, but, um, I took them off Tuesday night and I just wanted to give my nails a little breathing time so they can kind of, um, you know, just be a little bit healthier. So when you do your nails or, you know, if you do gels or nail polish, um, if you don't let your nails breathe, they can, you know, kind of get a little brittle and things like that. So letting them breathe. Um, but planning to do them again soon because I'm just so obsessed with doing them. I love the Color Street Nails so, so much. So I am going to have a online party. <laughs> I've never done with these before, but I'm really excited about it. Um, it's through Facebook and my, my sister-in-law's sister is a stylist. And so that's why I buy mine through and, um, she's going to be hosting the party. So it's, um, going to be at 7 PM on April 21st and that's Eastern standard time. And as of right now, I don't have a link for the group. Um, so if I do get a link for the group, I will put it in the description box down here. Um, and then if you're not either on Facebook or if you're not really into like doing any of those parties, anything like that, um, there should be a shopping link that I can put down there too. It'll just take you straight to the Color Street website and then um, you can purchase it like under my party if you wanted to. So, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about it. <laughs> but what's kind of cool is um, a lot of times at these parties, they'll do like, you know, giveaways and games and stuff like that. So it's just a lot of fun. Um, so if you guys are interested, um, like I said, I'll have a link down there if it's available. Um, and when it is available, I will put it in there. Um, you can feel free to message me about it too, and I can send it that way too. Um, oh, and I did want to let you know for any international, so anyone out of the U.S., as of right now, they don't ship to the U.S., um, but I know that, it, or it sounds like they are working on that. I don't know that for sure, but it sounds like that's something that they will be changing. So, um, but yeah, so yeah, if you're interested in that, come on, check it out. <laughs> I'm really, really excited about it. I, I think I was talking about this before is that as a dog groomer, it's just been so nice to be able to have my nails done and have them last. Um, because I'm, my hands are in water all day. I'm using a Dremel tool on an animal that's moving. So a lot of times, you know, I'll hit, hit my nails with the Dremel on accident. Um, and having the color street, I usually do like a protective layer as well on there. It makes it last so much longer and it's so fun. So when I would paint my nails, they would chip off within like two to three days with these, I can get a full week easy and just with minimal wear on the ends. So I love them. And they have such cute colors and I love the glitter ones. Oh, so much fun. So yeah. All right, guys, I think I'm done chatting with y'all for today. Um, we'll see how long this one ends up being, but, um, yeah, I hope you guys are well. Um, 
Let me know what you're working on. Let me know how you're doing. If you guys use Color Street, do you love it? It's really nice for knitters too because you can just do your nails and get back to your knitting. So I'm obsessed. <laughs> All right, guys, I will talk to you later and I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.